Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sam and Ryan channel. My Hi name Dad, is Sam. And I'm Ryan. And today we are playing a new fun game for us. Heck yeah, a completely original game that no one else has played or conceptualized totally. before, and none of you have seen a TikTok of Tom Holland and Zendaya playing it because we came up with it first and no one else has done it. It's called Not Agree, agree to, uh, to Disagree. disagree. That, it, that, that is what it's called. I know, but they, that's, that's what they call What's it. What's the name of the channel that came up with this? I don't know. Okay, well, we'll put their title up here because I do think we have to technically give credit, okay? Okay, All right. unless we call it something else like Disagree like, to Agree. Oh God. Sam and Ryan present Disagree to, to agree, agree, the original concept. That you've never seen before. Yeah. Don't put these words in another order. Welcome to Disagree to Agree. <laughs> the way that this works is pretty simple. Today, we are going to be talking about all things Marvel, making some statements, and then seeing if we agree or disagree. It's, it's really simple, it's really straightforward. No wonder two people totally came up with this idea at the same time, right? <laughs> we have these little pawns. Mine's a Diet Coke can, because I'm a diabetic, and Sam is a regular Coke can, because she's not a diabetic. All of the lines on the table represent different viewpoints, from strongly agree to strongly disagree. And we will be taking our cans as a totem and putting them somewhere on the table to represent how we feel about the given statement, and then we will discuss how we feel. The topic is Marvel, the product is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, give us free stuff. <laughs> and I say, we just get started. I agree with that statement. Strongly agree. Whoa. Whoa. Samantha. Yes. What is the first question? Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man. Okay, <laughs> so obviously I put strongly agree. I think Tom Holland is fantastic. I think Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are obviously fantastic, fantastic actors as well. But the reason that Tom Holland's Spider-Man is my favorite is because I feel like he plays it like a 16 or 17 year old would play Spider-Man or would be Spider-Man. It feels, um, so much more authentic to me. And I like how playful and bright-eyed this Spider-Man is. Uh, it just feels super like relatable. I don't know, I don't know why, but he, in my opinion, just nails the character of Peter Parker. And I love that he does a lot of his own stunts with all of his like dance training and all that stuff. Yeah. No, I mean, I strongly agree with everything that you just said. And the reason that I didn't put strongly disagree is because I love Tom Holland as Spider-Man. And I don't even know if I can really like defend this position, but there's just a certain essence about Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man mm. that I just love. I feel that Tom Holland, and I, this is not a criticism, it's just an observation. He plays the reluctant hero with kind of a doofy tone hmm. and I feel that Toby plays the reluctant hero with a reluctant tone. And there's something about that sort of like, I, I genuinely cannot believe any of this is happening to me and I don't know what to do about it. Yeah. it it's a little bit more, I don't know how to put it in any other way, but it's a little bit more filmic. Like yeah. it feels a little bit more like, I'm watching this like epic movie, whereas, and this is noteworthy, when I watch Tom Holland, I feel like I'm watching Disney. What came to my mind when you were just describing how Toby is more filmic, to me, Tom is more comic book-esque. Yeah, maybe. But. Again, I yeah. love Tom, I just, I know. my you, favorite you is Toby, fun. so. And I love him too. I gotta, so. I gotta, I gotta, okay. I gotta put my can over here for <laughs> Toby. <laughs> for Toby. All right, so get your totem back. All right. What is the next question? Wanda is the strongest Avenger. Well, I see we both strongly agree. <laughs> I feel like that's even like basically canon at this point. She is now the Scarlet Witch. That is one of the most feared and powerful beings to exist, so we're led to believe at this point. Mm. Obviously, I know the Marvel universe is massive. 
massive, so that might change in an instant. But the first thing that I think of is when Wanda is fighting Thanos one-on-one, -on -one, which we see a lot of the Avengers do, but they don't last very long and they kind of struggle with it. Wanda was fighting Thanos when he had five out of the six Infinity Stones in his gauntlet. gauntlet already, and he was scared of her. Like, she was doing severe damage, and she wasn't even, like, fully the Scarlet Witch yet. That was before mm -hmm. the WandaVision series where she, like, really gets her new uniform and mm -hmm. everything and, like, becomes the Scarlet Witch officially. So, like, I'm just like, I'm sorry, if you last the longest with Thanos, in my opinion, you're the strongest Avenger. Yeah, I mean, like, putting the Marvel heroes against Thanos feels like a good kind of check. And yeah. it feels like the only person other than Wanda that Thanos actually fears is, like, maybe Captain Marvel. Oh, but yeah. the thing that pushes me over the edge to be like, it's Wanda, is that so far, canonically, like what we are the most afraid of is an infinity gauntlet with all the stones, because mm -hmm. if you have that, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And those stones representing whatever it is, like time, space, reality, soul, soul. mind, power. Power, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, just in the WandaVision series alone, we see Wanda capable of manipulating all of those things. She is a walking, fully realized Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. That's terrifying. Yes. Like she is that power without needing to harness it with something external to her. It's kind of hard to argue that's with that. That's the T. Yeah. I think that's the argument right there. Yeah. All right. Remove, remove your totem. Mm. Next statement. Thanos was valid. So you said disagree I said and disagree. I said agree. I am most curious to hear your argument first. The reason that I picked agree is because of the word valid. You can have a valid argument without being correct. Sure. I mean, just that I don't want to like start any huge debates or make anyone severely uncomfortable, but like f on a mass extinction level for humans, like the number one thing that will do it is there are too many of us using too many resources and mm -hmm. doing too much damage to the world. So it is valid to argue that if you could cut that population in half, we would buy potentially infinite time. I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm not saying I was like rooting for the snap, but if the word is valid, then I agree that he's valid. I don't agree with his methods, but I do agree with his point of view. That's interesting because even like, even listening to you, I'm kind of like, I get it. I like, I, I don't think I'm gonna change my answer, but you know, it's one of those things where I had my moments where I was challenged watching Infinity War when he was just sitting there explaining like, uh, okay, like I'll do it myself. Mm -hmm. Like I, like the universe is kind of falling apart. Mm -hmm. Here's everything that's going wrong. There are too many people. And I will say, this is almost an argument for you, but like he did it in probably the most peaceful way he could have. Right. Obviously we didn't, obviously there was like an infinity war, but like if, if Thanos just like had all the stones and like just the snap, like it looked pretty painless. It looked confusing, mm -hmm. but like it looked kind of painless. I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I don't want to oh go. Oh God, no, not that. That was, that was the most pain I've ever felt watching a Marvel movie. Oh God, that just made me so sad. Um, the most pain I've ever been watching a Marvel movie was the pain of laughing so hard during Ragnarok. Still oh, my favorite Marvel that, movie. No, that's a brilliant movie. So yeah, I, I disagree only because I don't think that, I don't, why do I disagree? Sorry, I'm just like having a crisis <laughs> right now. I'm like, why do I disagree? It's just the optimist in me, I think. Like I get it, we're like running low on resources and everything, but in this world where you have like all the technology that they have and like, you, you know, all of those resources, it feels it feels like you could create another option for humanity. Yeah. And like, it doesn't feel like it has to resort to that, yeah. I think is my optimistic viewpoint, which is why I 
disagree. Yeah, but it's meant to be challenging. I mean, exactly. if you watch Batman, it, it's hard to see the Joker's point of view. Yeah. But when you watch Infinity War and Endgame, like, it is easy to see Thanos' point of view. Mm -hmm. And again, if the basis is correctness, I would move my can to a different line. Yeah. But if the basis is validity... Like, you can see his logic. <laughs> you did not just snap. You just snapped. <laughs> All right. Okay. Reset your totems. Right. What's the next <laughs> statement? Captain America is overrated. Okay. Um... Wow. Can I just, okay, I know that you love Chris Evans, I mean Captain America. <laughs> and again, I'm going on the language. Okay. Like Captain America is awesome, Captain America is great, Captain America is the first and therefore like the trendsetter, all of these things. That's great, that's valid one might say. <laughs> but is he overrated? Yes, I strongly agree with that. Like when you put Captain America up against pretty much every superhero, the only thing he has that could like win the battle is his moral compass. Because every single one of the Marvel superheroes, I'm sorry, but they could kick his Except for Hawkeye. And Ant-Man. <laughs> you know. But they, Hawkeye isn't a superhero, he's a hero. Mm. He's a really good archer. He's not super. And Ant-Man is the worst thing that ever happened to humanity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which yeah. is not a statement on Paul Rudd. Who oh, we love Paul Rudd. I thought for Paul Rudd. Yeah. Wow, okay. I said disagree because I, I can see the point of, I think he might be a little bit overhyped because he's played by Chris Evans and everyone loves Chris Evans as, and, as a human, as an actor, yes. as and a- and just for clarity, of Captain America of is overrated. No, of course. I don't, um, Chris Evans has nothing to do with it. I sure, him. sure, but I'm, I'm just including him because he plays right, Captain right, America. Right. And I do think that that does influence why he might be a little bit overhyped is because he's played by a lovable person. Mm -hmm. um, I think Captain America is such an important superhero. He is super, he is a literal, literal super soldier. And when you also include the fact that he is technically worthy enough to wield Thor's hammer, which has been exclusively reserved to a literal God for the last known reality, like that in my opinion, really ups his superhero status. And, and, and to me, like, I mean, obviously the moment of Captain America, like picking up the hammer and throwing it and receiving it and then spinning it behind him, like it's just such an epic movie moment. Mm -hmm. But that to me, it really, it really, it really elevated him. And so I don't know. I, like, I just, I don't think he's overrated. I think Captain America is a good superhero, has a great moral compass, has really cool powers and ability. And I know it's like super strength is like meh, when you put it up against the Scarlet Witch and Vision. And well, because like Spider-Man has super strength. Yeah. Like it, it's not the Hulk has. They all have super strength. Yeah, kind of, but not like in the same way, I guess. Right, because like they were they're born with it different. or contracted it and he got it from science. Yeah, yeah, they're not in the same way, I get it. I, like, I, I, just, feel, I, just I feel, feel like you written. answered the question, is Captain America important? Which I think we would both strongly agree with. Not, is he overrated? And I don't think he's to the overrated. point about the hammer, like the hammer to me is like a manifestation of Thor's powers. And is it amazing that Captain America is so noble that he can be in receipt of the lending of Thor's powers? Yes. but that's still like Thor's powers. Like mm. when you were like, it was so epic when he did all of the things that Thor always does. It's sort of like, yes, I agree, Thor is epic, but- I get your point. It's just, I get, no, I do, I do get your point. He's overrated, okay, I just, right. I just don't think he's overrated. I think, I think You think hype, he's rated? I think he, the hype that he gets is justified. justified. I, I respect that. Okay, next. <laughs> this is the last question, or the last statement, right? Rocket Raccoon is the best guardian of the galaxy. Ooh. I went strongly agree. And this is one of those things that I, I've never really thought about before because 
in my opinion, like the Guardians of the Galaxy kind of feel like the knockoff Avengers. <laughs> And like, I know they all exist in the same world and they're all totally its own thing, but that whole group, like band of mits, misfits thing, sometimes works for me and sometimes doesn't. When I'm looking at all of the other members of the Guardians of the Galaxy, like I, I'm not very much drawn to any of them. Other, I mean, I, I love Groot, but when I'm looking at like, who is, who is the best, who's the most efficient, who's the most successful, I think I'm the most drawn to Rocket. Frankly, like everything you said is right. And I didn't say strongly disagree because uh -huh. I, like Rocket is the best, but I just ignored the question and answered the question, is Rocket your favorite? And I disagreed because <laughs> my favorite is Groot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But Groot is, I mean, effectively worthless, especially when he's a teenager and he kind of sucks. Except but for when he saved all of their lives. At the, yeah, at the end with the... Of the first one. Yeah. Well, and in the, the second one, ball. he like finally puts down his Game Boy and like, you know, because of the hammer being oh, yeah, smelted becomes, in the star. He becomes he, the handle yeah. of the axe for Thor. Well, part of him does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, he just cuts off his arm. Yeah, yeah. He, it grows back. Yeah. It wasn't that big of a sacrifice. Right. <laughs> I really have no leg to stand on here, but I just... You just love Groot. I, I am Groot, so... <laughs> um, so simply, simply I put. Yep. I mean, if you really wanted to make your argument, you would have only said, I am Groot in response to everything. I am Groot. <laughs> well, there you go. That is Disagree to Agree, the original concept <laughs> by Sam and Ryan. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. If you enjoyed this content, let us know. We'd be happy to make more of it. We'll see if we get sued or not. Yeah, I mean, that would be a really petty lawsuit considering it's like a internet game, but... We'll find out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> click the link below to donate to the Ryan and Sam Legal Action Fund <laughs> to fight lawsuits from content creators. No. Uh, seriously, thank you for watching. Let thank us know you. if you have any ideas for uh, uh, future segments of Disagree to Agree. <laughs> and uh, we love you. Like and subscribe, you know. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, Daddy. Bye.